Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super elated to be able to scrutinize another Lindy Hop competition. This time it's a solo jazz contest and I can't wait to give you guys my opinion on it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I am going to tell you the absolute truth of who I thought was the best dancer. So are you ready for it? All right, this is a five minute long competition, so let's see <coughs> what happens. Good phrasing. Here we go. Finale. I'm feeling this audience, they are really into it. That's always good for a change. Sometimes the audience is like sleep. I don't blame them because a lot of times it's really late at night, but this audience is really into it. Yes. 
This is good. I get a good snapshot of these dancers' best qualities when I can see them all jamming out like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just letting them go. This might be a thirty minute song. This audience, this audience is into it. Oh, it is Felix. Okay. All right. So well, let me tell you, uh, I'm just going to fade it out right here. Uh, let's talk about this. This was good. You know what I liked about this one is I got to tell you, like I mentioned in the video, audiences tend to be a little fickle. Sometimes they're really into what they're watching and sometimes they're just tired and you know They're not going to really give you the energy you need if you're up there performing and it looked like this audience was just really engaged and, and Supportive so I gotta say a big shout out to the audience here whatever this event is. I can't really read that sign But I would have loved dancing in this competition having an audience. That's just elated to watch me dance um Great job on that, guys. One of the things that I noticed in this competition is that everybody pretty much had a good solid grip on a lot of the traditional solo jazz moves. So I, what I normally have to do is go straight to styling and the things that I like. So first, obviously you have to identify what are those traditional solo jazz moves that are really important. Well, there are a handful of those moves, and if you're within the solo jazz culture, you understand what those moves are. So for me as a judge, I typically judge the technical ability of the dancer to do those moves by a certain criteria, and that is if they can keep their upper body more quiet than their lower body. I've elaborated on this a lot in other videos, but it really does help the dancer fit a vintage uh, styling uh, with their movement. A lot of times uh, dancers who can typically dance uh, in our modern times will get involved with swing dancing and they tend to not know how to make their modern movements fit a vintage uh, motif and that's unfortunate but it seemed like these dancers as a whole they had it all five of them did and I appreciated that to see the isolation and the seriousness of remembering the jazz steps. What are those basic jazz steps and could they do it well? So um, I had to nitpick. I was really nitpicky on this one. Um, once I get past the element of can they do solo jazz properly to fit the right genre, then I have to go into a more nuanced way of looking at it. And that is who's, who's really unique? Who's trying to do something that uh, isn't too much of a put on for the judges, but they're allowing me to see a little bit of who they are and uh, with, at the same time being able to balance the technique with that. I think that's an art in itself and it's really bold to be able to just simply be who you are and get out there doing the technique and differentiating yourself from other dancers that are competing with you. So I will have to say my my first, uh, pers my first reaction was that this is going to be good because the first dancer, she had like a goldish green shirt. I loved her phrasing and I thought, yeah, this is going to be good. The second dancer went up and it was the same kind of phrasing. And I thought, yep, <clears throat> this is going to be a real challenge on judging this because I, I, I couldn't tell how unique they were uh, with the actual movements itself. If I would have just saw their legs, the patterns kind of set, felt the same, and um, that was hard for me to really judge those, those first couple of dancers. Now, I will tell you, my winner, the one that stood out to me the most, who also had a lot of the traditional jazz steps, but 
he chose to use them in a different way to really highlight his uniqueness. I think his number one asset was control of his upper body. Um, he did it in such a way where I felt like he could do more, but he's choosing not to. And I think there's something that's admirable about that. And so in doing that, whenever he started to do his fancy footwork, it stood out even more because he, he wasn't moving as much. And that's the gentleman with the white shirt and the gold tie. He had like a yellow little band on his shoes. I really not only liked his dancing, but I thought he was the better technical dancer for the genre. Um, that again is a bias thing. Um, all of them were excellent technically. I could tell that they were dancing vintage jazz movements, but he had that extra layer of quietness in his body and control that allowed me to say, in my mind, what is he gonna do next? Like, he's clearly capable of doing a lot more and having the same energy level as many of the other dancers, but he's not really doing that. And he's leading me on telling a story about who he is in that particular moment. And I liked that. He not only did like fancy footwork, but he was doing like some of the traditional Charleston movements. And uh, he had a certain personality with him. It was confidence, he was happy, but it wasn't cocky. Because you can tell there's like a there's that cockiness part where it's just kind of a turn off. He didn't none of the dancers really had that. Yeah, because sometimes you'll have a, a dancer who has the confidence part, but their dancing is lacking. So it comes across again as cocky. And you're like, what are you cocky for? You're not doing anything. You know, we've seen I've seen many dancers do that over the past. And then eventually they're humbled in the competition. And so they. They bring the confidence level down a little bit and they work on the dancing and then eventually they match it back up to where you can see the confidence match the level of dancing. And I think this is a, a, a dancer who really matched that for me. Um, I would have loved to be able to see like his dancing before. I don't know if he's a newer dancer or not, how long he's been dancing, but I loved his confidence. I loved the control of his footwork whenever it was crazy and fast. He didn't undermine any of that by moving his upper body too much um, or vying for attention other ways. So big shout out to him. I think he crushed this competition. I was looking again for control and everybody had that, but he had an extra level of that control that allowed me to see his second quality. And that was uh, musicality. I use that word musicality just to highlight that he was doing micro rhythms he wasn't just focused on the macro phrasing you know two steps here two steps here four steps here change the phrasing he wasn't just doing that I think that's the bare minimum that a lot of dancers have to have in order to make jazz movement and music mesh together just to match the phrasing but I think he was also highlighting the the, the music that the soloist would might play within that phrasing. And I think that's that's a whole nother level. A lot of people will try it, but then they get too sloppy. So anyway, his control didn't allow him to look sloppy. It made it actually amplified uh, his strengths. And I think that's amazing. So big shout out to him. Who do you think should have won this competition? I would have loved to see Felix just get out there and start like competing. People are like, what are you doing? You're judging. He's like, shut up, I'm competing now. Get behind me. <laughs> that would have been really funny. But who do you think should have won this competition? That's my choice. You guys have a different perspective. Is this your first time watching something like this? Let me know. What did you think stood out the most to you? I noticed the audience was screaming for certain things that I didn't even think that was a big deal. That could be a culture thing. Um, it could be an inside joke that you know could have happened. But let me know what you think in the comments section. If, if, if you are struggling with your solo jazz and you know the movements, but you don't know how to start in adding your own personality without ruining everything and keeping that balance so that the movements that you do still look good and polished, but still still weird at the same time. You need that weirdness, which is basically the creative part of who you are to make solo jazz look, solo jazz look like an individual thing. It isn't just something that we all do and, and just memorize all of these patterns. It, it really is something that you're supposed to partake in that is balancing the old mixed with 
who you are as an individual. So if you're struggling with that, I encourage you to take some of my free courses below. I've got like over 30 courses that you can try out. I've got a lot of solo jazz courses in there that will not just give you moves, but proper context so that you can fix yourself uh, when you're working on new ideas to make yourself look unique. If I don't get a chance to see your comments in the reaction video comment section, hopefully I get a chance to see you in one of my classes online. Take care.